This past Lord's Day afternoon, we gave you a scripture concerning Abraham and affecting all the nations of the earth. And we gave you a scripture about Israel affecting all the nations of the earth and being a curse unto them. I gave you Jeremiah 26, 26. There is no Jeremiah 26, 26. Sister Brenda Quick was very faithful to tell me that it's Jeremiah 26, 6. So we thank the Lord that we're able to uh, have that corrected so we don't misguide people in any way. I studied all day long. <clears throat> I've searched and I've prayed and I've done everything I know to do. I don't have a title. I don't have an outline. I'm just going to get up here and read some scripture and then we're going to send you home before it freezes, okay? Genesis chapter 21. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. The Lord visited and it says, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age. That word for means if God hadn't have done it, it would not have gotten done. <clears throat> at the time, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Now notice in verse 2 that she bare Abraham a son. Verse 3. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. In chapter 17, in verse number 24, we find that Ishmael and Abraham were circumcised at the same time. Genesis 17, and Abraham, verse 24, Abraham was 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, and Ishmael, his son, was 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael, his son, and all the men of his house, born in the house, and bought with money of the stranger, were circumcised with him. So Ishmael was brought into the sign of of the covenant, but he was he did so in a group. It happened with everybody on that very day. But the first child of promise is circumcised all by his little lonesome self. God will deal with you individually as a child of promise. Does anybody remember their four words that they learned last Wednesday night and Galatians chapter 4, 28, and we, brethren, as Isaac was. <clears throat> so if we see Isaac, we think of ourselves and say, Lord, how does that apply to me? That's what the apostle said this was all about. So God is going to cause you at the early age, Abraham 86, Ishmael 13, I don't know how all the rest of the men were, it doesn't say, but this little child, eight days old. <clears throat> so you say, well, if circumcision, if circumcision is a sign of putting off the carnality of the flesh, what do we see about that with Isaac? As soon as he was born, eight days later, he gets circumcised. First John chapter 5 and verse number 18. First John chapter 5, verse 18. <clears throat> We know that whosoever is born of God does what? Sinneth not. Sinneth not. So this that was born of God, right at the outset, he circumcised and the carnality of the flesh is cut away from him. But you have to understand this, that which is born of the flesh is still being flesh. This is just talking about that which is born of God. So that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And so the spiritual man never sins. Was Isaac capable of sinning? Are you? Am I? Sure. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Immediately upon his birth, he was circumcised. The flesh was cut away. You say, well... That's mighty early, but we're just talking about the man of the Spirit. He's the little 
child of promise, then how could he sin if that which is born of God sinneth not? Because that which is born of Abraham can sin. Right? James chapter 1 and verse number 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted, listen, when he is drawn away of three words. His own lust and enticed. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. So we see that I, he says, I write unto you that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. So he's writing unto you that you might remain in the Spirit, walk not in the energy of the flesh, and you will be able then to, be a, to walk before the Lord in uh, in a more proper fashion. So when Isaac was eight days old, <clears throat> Genesis 21, 4, he was circumcised all by himself at the very beginning of his life, which shows you the condition of the, of the promised seed, the spiritual seed, as Isaac was, so are we. That which is born of God sinneth not. So here he was by himself, being circumcised and not with a, a group effort as the rest of them were in chapter 17 verses 24 through 26 and that's how it happened to you too and sarah said god hath made me to laugh wait a minute i messed up verse 5 and abraham was a hundred years old when his son isaac was born unto him and sarah said god hath made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me and she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne <coughs> excuse me, him a son in his own, over and over and over and over again as Abraham's son. <coughs> and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which was born unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son. My son. Wait a minute. We've read like 17 times from verse 1. It's Abraham's son. <clears throat> but... Here we go. This is going to be a family spat. This is going to be a marital situation. You know, when they act up, them's your kids. You do something with them. <clears throat> but when they're doing good, y'all see what my kids did? So here we go. It's that, it, it, it was that simple. But it affected the world. It separated the Israelites from the, from the nation of the Arabs. Ishmael was the father of all the Arabs. Uh, this right here, just this one little thing. Uh, my son, even with Isaac, she is glad to claim him, proud to claim him to be Abraham's son because she bore, birthed him to Abraham. But when this starts, when this mocking starts, she said, you're going to have to do something. You're not going to let, you, you, he's not going to do this to my son. And, and so we see that uh, there was enmity between her and Hagar. If you go back to chapter 16, <clears throat> Sarah said unto Abraham, verse 2, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. The Lord restrained her from bearing, and the Lord caused her to bear. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened unto the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, his, her maid, the Egyptian, after, Abraham, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband to be two words. His wife. Uh, marriage back then was more about procreation than it was about companionship. You can't pull that off today, but that's the way it was back then. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. Listen, and when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. 
put a baby in a woman's arm and she's better than everybody else, especially those that can't have them. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. Wait a minute. I thought you just said up in verse 2, Give me a child by this woman. She did. You better watch it, kid. Listen. I have given my maid into thy bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. Here she puts her hands on her hips and looks him dead in the eye and said, Boy, the Lord judged between me and thee. Now you know why it says Abraham had his tent and Sarah had her tent. They learned to live together separately. <clears throat> so you have just an everyday providential thing. Just add that third party in and man, paradise is lost. So it's your son, your son, Abraham's son in, in verses 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7 of chapter 21. But then when it gets to uh, 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 Ish, Ishmael mocking Isaac, it's my son. And that's how it happened. In verse number 11 of Genesis chapter 21, And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. That boy meant all the world to him. It wasn't grievous in his sight because of his lust or having any desire, inordinate desire for Hagar. It was that was what God had promised him, a son. That made Abraham very happy. He rejoiced in that boy. He had 13 years at least with him. And, and he, he, he felt like that this was what God wanted. And uh, we see that he cries out in chapter 17 and verse number 18. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And then in verse 20 of Genesis chapter 17. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him and make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget and I will make him a great nation. But he tells him in verse number 19 that his covenant will be with Isaac. If you will look at Romans chapter 9. <clears throat> Ishmael was circumcised. The Bible said in Genesis, I think it's 16... No, nope, it's chapter 21 and verse 20. And God was with the lad, that's Ishmael, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. So the God was with the lad. And he tells him, I'm going to bless him, Abraham, because he is thy seed. Now, Abraham is a picture of what? Anybody remember? The just shall live by Abraham. What? Faith. Sarah is a picture of the new covenant. Hagar is a picture of the law. And so we understand and see, dear soul, that even though Ishmael was not born of Sarah, even though he was circumcised, he was to be put out, but not without the blessings of God. It was going to be, and it was because Abraham was his father. God said, I'm going to stick by my promise and bless Abraham. And in thee, remember, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now, in Romans chapter 9, <clears throat> we've already read these verses. Most of what I'm doing right now is reviewing him. Verse 1, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. God knows I'm telling the truth. What is it, Paul, that I have great heaviness? This thing was very grievous to Abraham. Well, it was very grievous to the apostle Paul. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. What is your problem? What's causing you this? For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. So the Apostle Paul is grieving as much over the Israelites that are not coming 
to Christ by the gospel as Abraham was grieving over having to cast out Ishmael. But if you'll drop down to verse number 7, well, let's read verse 6. Not as though the word of God, it wasn't the gospel that didn't have any effect. Here it is, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Keep reading. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Ishmael was the seed of Abraham, but he's not one of God's elect. But God was with the lad, Genesis 21 and 20. And he sustained his life. And he took care of him. And he made him a great nation. He says, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And thy seed, we know, Galatians 3.16, is Christ. That is, they which are the children of the flesh. That is Ishmael. <clears throat> And these people the Apostle Paul is talking about, they could tra trace their lineage all the way back to Abraham. Physically. But not elect in Isaac, through Isaac. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of promise are counted for the seed. Then he goes on and starts talking about Sarah. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. So we understand and see that Ishmael is a child of the flesh, yet he's Abraham's son. So God's going to protect him and take care of him, but not within the, faith, with the household of faith and of the elect. He will be a great uh, father, a father of a great nation, just like the uh, sons of Keturah that he later marries in chapter 25, and they begin to come and produce the wise men of the east. So we see that God blessed Abraham, and every every, every time you look at him, there is a powerful development of the human race that God lost in the flood. God doesn't have a tear left. He destroyed everybody that had their imagination sinful in the flood. He's got to start all over. So with Abraham, he repop repopulates the earth. In Hagar, he populates the world through the Arabs and that nation, those peoples. And then the, the, the children of Keturah, I don't know where all they wound up, but he said he sent them eastward unto the east country. But in Isaac, here is the elect church of God. And it all comes through Abraham. So he has a hard time casting, her, casting him out. And I guarantee you that that put a breach between Abraham and Sarah that may not ever have been healed. I don't know. I said may not. You've got your own idea about it. It doesn't say, but it does say it was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And in chapter 21 and verse 12, And God said to Abraham, Let, not, let it not be grievous in thy sight, and listen at God, the mediator, between Sarah and Abraham. What does she call him in verse number 10? What does she call Isaac in verse number 10? My son. But what does he call Ishmael in verse number 11? His son. So the word son is used by both of them. So God getting in the middle of this thing and go mediate. And what does he call Ishmael in verse number 12? And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the land. The land. Look at chapter 21 and verse 20. Look at the first phrase. And God was with who? The lad. the lad. That's how he refers to him. He doesn't say Abraham's son. He doesn't say Hagar's son. He just says the lad. So the Lord says, Abraham, don't be grieved, grieved because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. 
for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So here is faith having entered into Hagar works prior to circumcision and prior to Isaac being born. And dear soul, you know yourself when you first got saved before God ever took you to the cross and before God ever got rid of all that old inordinate baggage of emotions, you thought uh, things and did things that now you got to throw it out. When faith enters into works, you get a wild man. And this old, you've got so many people in America today that's been brought up under the spirit of the whore, the old whore church, that they still hadn't thrown out Ishmael. They still believe in salvation by works. But unless you come under the promise of God and by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're never going to see that salvation is not of works, but it always is unto good works that no man, no flesh should boast in God's sight. So he said, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God says, he is your son. I'm going to take care of him. I told you I would. Re believe in me. Have faith in me. You're the father of the faithful. Believe me in this. He's going to be all right. But dear friend, casting that woman out of his camp was a death sentence. But God said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. That's what he did when he took Isaac up to Mount Moriah to offer him as a sacrifice. He rose up early in the morning <clears throat> and took bread and a what of water? Bottle. Wasn't hard, was it? Wasn't a trick question. A bottle of water. That's what it says. And gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. He's a teenager. You reading child, you think it's a little kid. He, he was 13 when he got circumcised. So he's got to be at least 15 because uh, Isaac probably got weaned when he was two, somewhere along there. The bottle, or maybe earlier, uh, the water was spent in the bottle. She cast the child under the shrubs. And she went and sat and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were, a bow shot. For she said, I don't want to see that child die. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of Hagar. No, the lad, right? God heard the voice of the lad. Didn't he say, I'm going to take care of the lad? Yep. <clears throat> and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, and God tickles me asking questions like this, What's your problem, Hagar? What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. I know where he is. I know where you put him, and I'm listening to him. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, that which she could hold in her hand, God would make a great nation out of. Hold him in your arms. Now, listen at verse 19. And God opened her eyes, and she saw what? What did you tell me that Abraham gave her uh, up there in verse 14? Uh, containing water a bottle right where did he put the bottle dear friend when works goes out from faith they don't have any more bread than what the true church has given them they only know and you can prove this in 1st John chapter 2 they went out from us there are many antichrists in the world where did they come from? They went out from us. 
You can't apostatize from that which you don't profess. So they went out from the true church to show that they were not of us. For if they had been of the true faith, they would never, no, never, they would no doubt have remained with us. So all she's got is the bread Abraham gave her. And all she's got is a bottle of water that she carries on her shoulder. It's her responsibility to carry the bottle of water and she's got the burden on her. But she couldn't see a well of water. John 7, 39, if any man will come after me, that last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus lifted up his voice and said, if any man will come after me, out of his innermost being, out of his belly shall fall what of living water? Rivers. God's got rivers. They got a bottle. She's right there where a spring is and can't see it. Salvation by works. Justification by works. Justification by uh, uncircumcised heart. And do we need to read Philippians 3.3 3 to make sure you understand that you are responsible for for circumcision men and women sitting men and women sitting here tonight let's do galatians ephesians we're coming right back so just read ephesians excuse me philippians i'll get it right in a minute philippians chapter 3 verse 2 beware of dogs what are dogs those that come and lick up their vomit again those that that, that uh they vomit out all of their sins and all of all of that uh, pollution that they have taken in but then later they come back and eat it up again they return to their vomit it's it's religious people who make a profession of faith and go by uh legalistic uh rules and regulations for a while because they don't want to go to hell but after a while they say fool it's too hard i'm going back doing what i'm do i was doing so they're dogs they just go back to what they were Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. That is the mutilation of physical circumcision in order to be accepted with Christ. For he says in verse 3, For we are the circumcision. Here is the New Testament spiritual definition of circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have what? No confidence in the flesh. That's circumcision. I'm not going to listen to my flesh. I'm going to worship Christ. I am not going to try to do something in order to be saved. I am going to do these things because I am regenerated. So we see, dear soul, that that which goes out from Abraham goes out with the responsibility of bearing the water themselves but they only got a bottle. And the only bread they got is what they learned from Abraham. And that's going to soon be gone. A preacher in Birmingham years ago said, I don't know what I'm going to preach on now. I preach through the whole Bible in one year. I can't even get through the 21st chapter of Genesis. Their bread is soon spent. And their water is their own responsibility. And they've got a well of living water right close to them, but they can't see it unless God shows it to them. And God will be merciful unto them. Will you look at Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 11? Ezekiel chapter 33. In verse number 11. <clears throat> Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye, repent from your evil ways. Oh, why will ye die, O house of Israel? They may be of Israel, but they're not of Isaac. So Ezekiel 33, 11, God said, I don't have any pleasure in the damnation of the wicked. But, you, you, you know, you, you left Abraham's house. You came in in the wrong way to start with. You're an offense to Sarah and to the child Isaac. He's starting out on his little life. 
blood led on the eighth day of his life. Then he's weaned. And then he's mocked. So the kid from the very outset, at the very beginning of his life, he's got, he's got all these trials. And you're the guys that's doing the mocking. And you know, you were circumcised with the group. Well, did it hurt? Well, you know, he didn't ask. He by himself. Ishmael had all the rest of them guys around him, but not Isaac. Do you remember what God said to Abraham in chapter 12 and verse number 1? Get thee out of thy father's house and from thy, from thy country and from thy kindred unto a land that I will show y'all thee. It's a personal thing dear friend you're going to have to walk by faith because God is not going to let you walk on the buddy system amen preacher right. thank you alright <clears throat> verse 15 of chapter 21 and the bottle was spent excuse me and the water was spent in the bottle now don't do anything about the bottle just throw the kid under a bush and God said twice I heard the lad and he's not going to die. I done told y'all I was going to make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, Genesis 21, 19, and she saw a well of water. And guess what she did? Filled up the bottle again, for heaven's sakes. Some people have the richness of the Holy Spirit available to them, and all they got is a thimble to fill up God said out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living waters and yet she goes and fills up the bottle again and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink and God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer Dear soul, he was of the flesh. He was a child of the flesh. He could claim Abraham as his father, but he wasn't of the Spirit of God. He wasn't of Isaac. In Archers, chapter 49 of Genesis, in verse 22, Genesis 49 In verse number 22, Jacob is blessing his sons, and he comes to Joseph in Genesis 49, 22. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. You can't keep him in. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. That's the difference between the Ishmaelites and the true Israelite. Joseph is a fruitful bough. He's by well. He will never, ever wither up and die. He's got a continual supply of water. Therefore, the archers hate him. But his bow abode in strength. Joseph's bow and his and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. That's where Christ came from. Even by the by the God and the Father who shall help thee, and by the Almighty who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessings of the breast and and of the womb, the blessings of thy father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. I like that. Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him. Would you finish that? I think you'll like it. The crown of the head of him. That was separate from his Wow. Who did Ishmael get circumcised with? Everybody. 
Who did Isaac get circumcised with? Just himself. He started his little journey by faith, blood let on the eighth day, weaned, mocked, seeing his father grieved over another son, separate from his brother. Dear soul, do you feel like sometimes nobody understands you and, and, and you're all by yourself? Good. You may be a Christian. God don't save anybody on the buddy system. God's cross is not a cross built for two like a bicycle built for two. There's just one can hang over it. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And here he was, a man of the flesh, a man not of promise, critical, shooting those arrows. If you say anything you don't like, zing. He's a wild man. He penetrates you with criticism in a second. No patience. Without respect. His arrows were powerful and fierce. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. The birth of Isaac pushed out Hagar and Ishmael. Everybody seemed to be happy until Isaac was weaned. The celebration of Isaac's maturity forced the true nature of Ishmael and Hagar. Abraham loved Ishmael and couldn't give him up. He must have been doing good up to that time. But there was a seed down inside him just dying to get out, and only God could see it. Because man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And it takes the new birth, salvation by grace, for Ishmael to learn or to, to bring forth the mockery of his unbelief the mockery of his disrespect, the mockery of his hatred that anybody else could step in his place and get between him and his friend and his father Abraham. But that's when it all happened. And that's the first time that Sarah says, my son, and here we go. And with that, God separates these nations with just that family thing. But there's one other thing that happened. In verse number 22. You remember a fellow named Abimelech? You remember he was a fellow that said, I got this, a heart full of integrity. I didn't touch Sarah while she was in my house. I have a heart of integrity and I didn't touch her. God said, you lying rascal. He said, you ain't got no heart of integrity. I'm the one kept you from touching Sarah. Because neither you or Abraham is going to enter into her uncircumcised. You don't get into grace, dear friend, without coming by way of the cross. So here he is again. Verse number 22 of Genesis 21. And it came to pass three words. At that time. What time? At the time when Isaac was weaned. Two things happen. Ishmael and Hagar get cast out. All they got in that realm of thinking is what they learned from Abraham. But it's going to be perverted because they're going to look at it through the eyes and the mind of the flesh and not the spirit. And all they got is a bottle of water. They can't even see a well. And when they do see the well, the only thing they do is fill up their bottle again. They just got enough doctrine to get them by for one more time, you know. So they buy them a 22-volume set of John Calvin's commentaries. And they're on the road. But there's one more fellow we're going to deal with at that time. And it came to pass at that time that Abimelech, and he, he brought him some help. 
And he's got a funny name. How do you pronounce it? Michael. That's what they said. Did you hear that? <laughs> well, it sounded like it rhymed with Michael. Michael. Anyhow, it was a funny name, chief captain of the host, spake unto Abraham, saying, Listen, Emmanuel, God is with us. You ever sing that? You sang it better than that, didn't you? Better than I just did, yeah. God is with thee in all thou doest. How do you know that? Because it is echoed throughout the community that there's been some tremors over there in Abraham's house. Sarah has thrown a Baptist fit and you throw out Hagar and Ishmael and there ain't a man alive, a hundred years old and a woman, 90, ever had a baby like that. That reputation echoed throughout the community. And Abimelech said, hmm, Putting that together with what happened to me about Sarah and how God scared us to death and he made verses 17 and 18 of Genesis 21, he made every woman in my house barren. And to see now that this one that not only was barren but was dead in her womb brought forth this, this miracle child, he said, hey man, uh, come talk with me. Let's sit down and talk about this thing. Let's make a covenant. Verse 23, here's what he said. He spake unto Abraham, saying, God is with thee in all that thou doest. Now, therefore, wherefore, because God is with thee, you swear unto me here by God that thou wilt not deal falsely with me, nor my son, nor with my son's son, but according to the kindness that I have done unto thee. He still thinks he's a pretty good fellow. But according to the kindness I have done unto thee, thou shalt do unto me and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned. Abimelech in chapter 20 and verse 15 gave Abraham his first legal citizenship. Chapter 20 and verse 15, And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleaseth thee. He stamped on his, on his green card permanent citizen and he brings it up again and to the land wherein thou hast sojourned and Abraham said okay I will swear and Abraham uh oh can you believe this you read it I don't know if I'm reading it right uh, one two three four read me the first four words of Genesis 21 25 Son, you better watch out. Abimelech may have the upper hand at one time, but things can change. And there was something that happened here that gave Abraham the authority over Abimelech. And you do remember that Abimelech was the king of the Philistines, don't you? Abraham reproved Abimelech. <clears throat> he said, we got an issue. What was the issue in verse, where did I read it? 15 of chapter 21. What was the issue in Genesis 21, 15? It ran out of water, right? What happened in verse 19? God showed them a whole well full of water. The issue is always the Holy Ghost, folks. I don't care how straight they are, and I don't care if they can trace their heritage all the way back to John Calvin. If they ain't got the Spirit, I don't want to walk with them. Legalism, listen, socialism, listen, legalistic laws without the Spirit will take you to hell quicker than anything. Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. They have one thing that's got all the millions into eternal glory right now, and that's the Holy Ghost. 
He said, well, it was the gospel. That, listen, that was hundreds of years before the Bible, the New Testament was ever written and, 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 and commonly uh, produced among people. They didn't have, they had the God, they had God in their heart. The issue is always the Holy Ghost. You ain't got anything if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Listen, here it is again. Abraham reproves Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Hagar and Ishmael took his bread and a bottle of water. Abimelech takes his well. There ain't no Philistine can dig their own well and provide their own water. And Abimelech said, I wot not, I don't know who did this thing, Neither didst thou tell me, neither yet heard I of it, but right now, today. I didn't know a thing about this. If I'd known something about it, I'd done something, I would have done something about it. And you hadn't told me a thing about it till right now. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. Now, if Abimelech represents anything, he represents worldly knowledge. The Philistines live right close to Israel, and they kind of picked up a lot of stuff that Israel knew. He gives unto Abraham a thousand pieces of silver and sheep and oxen and all that stuff, maid servants and men servants, and Abraham receives it. But in return, Abraham gives him something that I don't know if Abimelech is going to really understand, I don't think he ever will, is that covenants cannot be made except by sacrifice of a proper animal before God. He took sheep and oxen, both of them sacrificial animals, and gave them unto Abimelech, and both of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves, and true to his nature, Abimelech, not knowing anything about sacrifice and covenants, he says, What mean these seven ewe lambs which thou hast set by themselves? And Abraham said, For these seven ewe lambs, and the ewe lamb is the mama lamb, it's the female lamb, is going to bring forth a lot of sheep if, if, uh, if, if things are blessed of God. Shalt thou take of my hand that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. <clears throat> Listen, dear soul, you have walked with God in some dark places. You didn't like in Isaiah 50, kindle your own fire. But sometimes there was darkness on the face of the deep and you had to wait till God said, let there be light and then there was light. But the thing about it was you were always able by the mercy and grace of Almighty God and by the lineage of the Holy Spirit quickened in you, able to find your own water. You were able to provide water those religionists around you may have a bottle on their shoulder, but it's going to give out for long. And there may be Philistines that want to come in and take over what you did and claim it for themselves. But Abraham said, I want you to enter into my mindset at least this much, Abimelech. I want you to understand and know that on the basis of a blood sacrifice, these wells were dug by me. Dear soul, the world does not understand, they never will, what a blessing the true church is to them in this world. How, listen, if you don't put some salt on grits, you ain't got nothing. And I love grits. I never met a grit I didn't like. But you got to have some salt. And the Lord said to the church, you're the salt of the earth. Two things salt does. Makes it flavorful and preserves it from corruption. 
your mama, your granny, and your grandmama and granddaddy, you know, they didn't have no refrigerator. They salted down that, that ham. Kept it from corrupting. So the salt of the earth, that's the Christian. They don't realize what a blessing having the church among them really is. And you're the light of the world. What darkness they would have if it were not for the reflective light of the church reflecting the light of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So Abraham is trying to make Abimelech know something as much as he can that the water that I'm providing here is mine. I'm the one that put forth the effort to bring it forth. And I want you to know that based and established upon a blood sacrifice or those that provide the blood sacrifice. They didn't actually sacrifice them, but they were those animals that could be sacrificed. Dear soul, if Abimelech and the world's ever going to find out what the blessedness of the water of the Holy Spirit is, they're going to have to come out of the blood. And it may be that Abimelech don't have a clue and it may be that those around you that you love and you want to get along with and try to make a covenant with, they may not have a clue about God. But you can't help but say it because that's the way it is. It's the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said many of, of these are enemies of the cross because they're gods or their appetites, their bellies. I tell you, weeping. They're enemies of the cross. And he said, I have digged this well. Verse 31, wherefore he called that place Beersheba. Where did Hagar go walking and wandering in verse 14 of chapter 21? Open book test, you tell me. Say it out loud. Beersheba. Where did Abraham make this covenant where the well was in chapter 21 and verse 31. Dear soul, Abraham just got water for everybody and everybody's, dry, everybody's drying up or either trying to steal it. There is enough blessedness in a single Christian to affect the whole community if people could only understand it and see it. Wherefore he called that place Beersheba because there, there they swear both of them. And thus they made a covenant at Beersheba because <clears throat> then Abimelech rose and Phicol, the chief captain of his host, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba. He shall be like a tree. Does anybody know the next word? Planted by the river of water. I felt that coming. And Abraham planted a grove in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord he is the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned in the Philistines' land many days. The first part of the chapter is aggrieved Abraham. The last part of the chapter is a confident Abraham rebuking the king and settling this thing about his men stealing his well. And it was so important to Abraham that everybody know that it was Abraham that dug that well, that it was a matter of contention between him and Abimelech. Dear soul, you, you may be able to slide on some things as far as, you know, how many hairs in that horse's tail in Revelation and you and your buddy at work is arguing about all that stuff. But there's one thing you can't slide on. The Holy Ghost. 
That's where you draw the line. I didn't do it. The Lord did it. It's not me. It's the Lord. It's not my understanding. It's the Spirit. And Abraham said, no, nope, we're not going to let this slide. And after he did that, grieved in the first part, issue of a well and a bottle of water and a loaf of bread or whatever it was in the first part, and then here's a well of water and all of this in the second part, Beersheba in the first, Beersheba in the last, and then it says, oh, Abraham just, here's my word, it's not King James, lollygagged around in the land of the Philistines, just wherever he wanted to go. Dear soul, listen, as dark as it is for you right now, it ain't always going to be that dark. Some of you, the rest of you smiling. As good as it is for you right now, it ain't going to always be that good. But I'll tell you this, if you'll do right by God, you'll learn to lollygag 